Here we have some World War II German camouflage helmets resting on some camouflaged gas mask canisters. The model goes from M1935 to M1940 to M1942. So this is basically the latest uh, German helmet model. This is 1940 and this is 1935. Obviously the M1935 was also used in 1945 and so on. But yeah, this is just the latest model that was produced during World War II. Obviously you have different factories, different liners, different types, different decals, blah, 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 blah. But again, I'm not gonna explain you all that because it's gonna be way too much. But yeah, these are all original shells. They were restored by me. I use these for reenactment, but original shells. And these days they are pretty hard to find. By the way, if you're wondering what this is, these are two real Edelweiss flowers. We have a tropical helmet right there with the dust goggles and underneath it we have a jerry can marked 1943 in sand color. Um, right here we have a post-war, uh, this is actually a DDR uh, German helmet. The interesting thing about these helmets is lots of people don't know but these helmets were actually already designed late in World War II and they were even used very very rarely uh, but they were used. This model helmet was used. Um, of course this is a post-war produced one so like I said it's from the DDR period Berlin Wall period. So yeah also a very interesting piece of history obviously. This model this exact model was was designed during the war and was also used. I uh, actually saw this helmet in a World War II newsreel uh, being worn in 1945. So very, very interesting. Like I said, there are so many details that I can tell you about that, but if I'm gonna do that, it's gonna be too long. So let me just continue. <sighs> there is so much to see, I just don't know what to say. Oh, I almost forgot. These are World War II shoes and someone made ice skates from them, so. That's pretty cool. But that was a while back for, I believe, 20 euros. Let me open up the display cabinet so you can get a better look. Right here on the left, we have an original German World War II Normandy camouflage Kriegsmarine M40 combat helmet. I bought this helmet a while back and this is definitely one of the most beautiful Normandy camouflage helmets I have ever seen. The colors are amazing. This day helmets like this are almost impossible to find and let me just show you the color. It's it's beautiful. Of course it's way more beautiful in real life. It's a three-tone camouflage helmet. It has been painted with brush and then with spray paint. It's the paint that they used for the vehicles and then they decided to spray some helmets as well and this was one of them. It still has the complete Kriegsmarine decal underneath the paint. You can see the gold a little bit right there. It's hard to see but it's still there. All original liner, chin strap, all original to the helmet, never been messed with. And uh, one of the very cool things is that this helmet actually has some camouflage paint on the chin strap as well. I'm not gonna show you right now because I don't wanna take it off the head, but yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful original German Normandy camouflage helmet. Every time again, when I take a look at this helmet, I'm just amazed by how beautiful it is. And like I said, I bought this helmet a while back, uh, but the prices of these helmets are sky high right now. It's insane. Right next to it, we have a very nice German visor cap. This is a private purchase visor cap and it's in great condition. Let me just show you the inside really quick. Still has the name of the original owner right there, Hermann Weber. A very nice original visor cap. Just beautiful, look at that. Look at the model, just absolutely beautiful. Never been messed with German World War II visor cap. Fantastic piece of history. Right next to that, we have this. 
And always when I come close to this helmet, I am, uh, I'm just feeling a little bit uneasy because this is this is one of the items in my collection that has a very very high price tag and I don't want anything to happen with it. <laughs> so for instance I hate to clean this all when there is dust here and stuff and I have to clean it I have to take this helmet out and I just I hate it so much because I don't want it to fall and stuff like that. You're just getting nervous when you're holding something like this in your hand but yeah, as you already probably guessed it, this is an original German World War II M35 double decal SS helmet. Um, let me give you some light. This decal is almost in mint condition. It's just, uh, it's sick. Look at this. Yeah, you cannot really find helmets like this anymore these days. It's, they're extremely rare. But yeah, this is a very nice and early original German World War II M35 a helmet has the original liner, has the original chin strap. Liner actually has a name inside of it, which is saying SS Unterscharführer Wimmer. So yeah, it has a name as well, which makes it even more valuable, obviously. But on the other side, we can see the other decal right there. It has been partly removed. That's because of the regulations. They wanted to remove the decals for camouflage reasons, but it only has been partly done. So the regulations were changing, they had to remove one of the decals, and even later in the war they just stopped placing the decals. But yeah, also there is a lot to talk about decals and when they were placed and when they weren't, and there were exceptions and stuff and blah 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 blah. I'm not going to talk about that right now. What was that? I heard something like a belt or something, what the heck is going on? I don't like, I don't like this. I'm getting goosebumps, I don't like this at all. I don't know what's going on. Uh, anyway, um, like I said, this is one of my most prized possessions for sure. If you want to see the liner of these helmets, close-ups of the decal and stuff like that, I actually made videos about them, so be sure to check those out. Right here we have some belt buckles. All the way on the left we have this beautiful uh, Hitler Youth belt buckle in mint condition. It says Blut und Ehre, which means blood and honor. Then right next to it we have a standard German army buckle. This one is saying Gott mit uns, which means God with us. This one is made from aluminum and it's a parade version because this is actually loose. But yeah, of course, obviously these were not only used in parades. They were also used in combat. Lots of times people will find these buckles on battlefields. But yeah, it's just so called the parade version. It's extra pretty because it's a loose part. And then right next to it we have this buckle. This is an original Waffen SS uh, belt buckle made from steel with silver finish. This one also has a text. It's saying Meine Ehre heißt Treue, which means my honor is called loyalty. Like I said, it's a steel version. Uh, it's more rare. Has a very nice finish and almost mint condition. Pretty hard to find. Right here we have this beautiful World War One. Well, actually it's pre-World War One belt buckle. Look at this. I got this from an amazing guy at the Cine Military Affair. Uh, be sure to check that video out. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful buckle. Like I said, pre-World War I. And it's also saying Gott mit uns. So yeah, a very, very old buckle actually, but in great condition. Really, really nice piece of history. Now we're going a little lower and we have more German helmets. This is an M35 camouflage helmet and it even has a camouflage band around it. I managed to buy this helmet for a very good price uh, because this person definitely didn't even know what he had. Uh, first it was like, what was it? I believe it was like 29 euros or something. But then others uh, started to bid on it. I was like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. This is my helmet. Uh, so the prices were getting higher and higher. But then I uh, offered a price that he could not refuse. I managed to get this helmet for a bit more than it was in the first place, obviously. Um, but for what it is, extremely cheap. Because it turned out to be a German M35 camouflage helmet. All original camouflage, as you can see. And underneath it, it even has a decal. I'm not going to remove this right now, but it has a decal of the Kriegsmarine, which is complete right there. Unbelievable, a German Kriegsmarine uh, camouflage helmet, even with the camouflage band around it. And this person had no idea. Talking about no idea, uh, this. <laughs> 
I bought this helmet a while back. It was for sale as a replica helmet for 75 euros. I saw immediately because of the shape and everything that it was not a replica helmet. So I bought it for 75 euros and when I got it, I was shocked because it actually turned out to be a Allgemeine SS helmet. The thing that really, really, really hurts me is that someone used sandpaper to age this helmet because this person thought that it was a replica. So it, someone decided to just use some sandpaper to make it look old. While it was old, it was all original. It just completely shattered my heart, but I got this original Allgemeine SS helmet for 75 euros. It has an SS decal right there and it's a very, very early one. So as you may know is that the SS, of course, in the very early days wasn't a part of the German army at all. So they actually had to buy their own uniforms. You know, they had to uh, get their own stuff. They didn't have access to the stuff of the standard German army because they, was, they were not a part of it. This helmet is produced only for the SS. People call these helmets the Himmler model. It really looks like the German World War I M16 helmet, but it's not. This helmet was actually produced for the SS. And um, this is a very, very, very interesting piece of history. Let me show you, I need my phone for that. We can see remains of green paint here and there. You can see that first a decal was painted by hand, which was really common because they didn't have their own decals. And later, actually, an SS decal was applied and you can see it right there. You can easily see that it's saying SS right there. So this is one of those scary black SS helmets, all original. And yeah, just too bad someone decided to completely ruin it by um, using some sandpaper, which I rather don't talk about because I'm, I'm, I'm just, oh. But right there on the other side, you can see the red and white. Those are remains of the party shield. And you can see the scratches all over the helmet because someone decided to, <sighs> You see all the scratches over the helmet. Someone literally scratched thousands of euros away. It's, it's, uh, makes me sick. Anyway, this person has no idea. I do, but I still also know that I bought an original Allgemeine SS helmet for 75 euros and it's still worth a couple thousands. So <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's a jackpot for me. It still has the original liner as well. I'm not going to show you right now, but yeah, insane piece of history for 75 euros. Can't complain. It's just a very scary idea. Who knows where this helmet was? I mean, it's the same for every single helmet, this one as well, of course, but I mean, this Allgemeine SS is very early SS. So maybe this was walking like a meter away from Adolf Hitler in a parade. You don't know. Maybe he was standing right next to him. You have no idea. Ah, oh, sometimes I wish these items could talk. Anyway, let's continue. Um, right here we have two standard German army buckles made from aluminum. As you can see, these are not the parade models. These are made from one piece. They still have the leather tabs, um, which is also, you know, these are very hard to find. And with these leather tabs, they're pretty expensive. So nice buckles. Right here we have a Kriegsverdienstkreuz. Right next to it, we have a sport badge. And this is a wound badge. This is a very interesting version. It's not the standard version. This is the so-called Legion Condor version. It's different because it's exactly the World War I version. As you can see, it's a World War I German Stahlhelm right there. But the only difference is that there is a swastika stamped inside of it. As you can see, this one is in nice worn condition. Hollow back, very, very nice little metal. And right here we have the standard version. So as you can see, the shape of the helmet is definitely different. Um, this is a World War II version. Well, obviously that is too because of the swastika. The model of this one is World War I, but it's World War II because there is a swastika. And this is just the standard World War II version. This one is in silver. We have a marking on the back right there. Also in nice worn condition. Right here we have a German Erkennungsmarke or dog tag. Um, if a soldier would get killed, uh, one half would stay with the body and the other half would be taken. So you would break it. Uh, this right here is an original case for a German Erkennungsmarke, still in mint condition. 
Right there in the back, we have a German World War II period harmonica. You're probably also wondering, why do I have three pieces of stone ling right here? Well, they're not just three pieces of stone. They actually have a high historical value. These pieces of stone come from the Reichsparteitag, Hitler's Berghof, and Hitler's Tea House. So these three pieces of stone were really close to Adolf Hitler and all the high-ranked evil Nazi officers. Just thinking about it is really weird and I'm really happy uh, that I have these three in my collection. So literally a piece of Hitler's house, Hitler's tea house and Reichsparteitag. So that is obviously very interesting. Um, we have a party badge right there. We have a small Hitler Youth uh, pin. We have a clip with SDG 44 ammo, still in great condition as you can see. Obviously deactivated, but original. Right next to it we have a very rare uh, stripper clip that I found myself on a Waffenes Exposition. It's red because it was a very special type of ammo, so yeah, very rare. We have a Gebirgsjäger patch right there. Let me show you over here. We have two medals. We have the famous Iron Cross second class right there. As you can see, in nice worn condition made by Otto Schickel. And the one right next to it is another Kriegsverdienstkreuz, also in nice worn condition. Obviously, we cannot forget about this beautiful original Walter P38 from 1943. It's all original and it's in nice used condition. Definitely one of my favorite pistols. I also owned a Luger P08, but when I stopped shooting at the range, I sold that one. Another very iconic weapon. Looks very modern for its time. It has this typical German look. When you see this, you immediately know it's German. And it's just, you know, the design, it's beautiful. It's just a fantastic pistol. And this is what it looks like. Here we have the sights. Just a beautiful Walter P38, and this one was produced in 19... 43 there you can see the maker ac and underneath that we can see 43 which means 1943 obviously has proof marks as well you can see the tiny eagles right there i just like the way it's worn and the bakelite grips a very nice pistol it's time to go down a little bit it's a little bit dark so let me give you some light right here here we have a nice single decal luftwaffe um x winter camouflage helmet you can see it has remains of whitewash. So yeah, just a nice, worn German combat helmet. It's resting on a gas mask canister, as you can see. We have some more personal things here. We have a Göffel, which is a fork and a spoon. This one is made from iron, so it's a little bit more rare. Uh, we have a German Kochgeschirr 31, with still a lot of original paint. Uh, we have a German flashlight right there. We have an envelope, Luftfeldpost, Deutsches Reich. We have some stamps with a pretty famous guy, as you can see. I don't really think they would appreciate it if you would use these stamps today, <laughs> but they're still in unused condition. Uh, we have lots of coins. These are all German World War II coins, as you can probably tell by the swastika and the eagle. And we have some paper money there as well. Uh, we have some more medals right there. These are Winterhilfe. We have another World War II period harmonica. Um, some more money, little pocket knife, a sports badge. This one is really nice and special to me as well. Uh, it was found in the Netherlands in a bunker. Uh, this bunker was completely burned on the inside. And um, I met a person on a flea market years ago when I was still a kid. And this woman said she had a medal for me that was found in a bunker. And she decided to just give it to me. So I, I gave my address and she actually sent it to me. That's how I got it. I got it for free. A German World War II sports badge. Some nice stampings on the back. Came from a German bunker in the Netherlands. So that's pretty interesting. Here we have some buttons that I found myself. I found hundreds of these buttons by accident actually when I was metal detecting. Um, they're made from glass. It says BDM, which means Bund Deutscher Mädel. So it's basically the female Hitler youth. Very interesting on the back. They are even marked with RZM, which means Reichszeugmeisterei. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's right there on the top. These buttons are really rare and I found hundreds of them basically by accident. So yeah, of course, I'm not going to display them all. I'll just display one of them. But yeah, that was a very, very lucky day. Here we have some medical stuff. Wund und Heilsalbe, German. 
some more metals. Here we have some German matches from the Second World War. Some lighters. This lighter is actually pretty interesting because I found this at a flea market. It's actually a lighter made from a German fuse. So that's a very interesting piece of history. Here's the top. I really like little things like that. Uh, well, here we have two German Luftwaffe belt buckles. This one still has the leather tap. Uh, this is the early version. The early versions have the tail hanging like this. The one right next to it is the later version. As you can see, this one does not have the tail hanging. It's a nice and used condition, but it has been denazified. We have some German 9mm shell casings, or should I say 9mm shell casings. Here we have a flashlight. You do this. And see, it still works. It's called Kneipkot in Dutch, but uh, yeah, World War II period flashlight. Right here, I have a German Mauser K98K bayonet in mint condition. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful, never used, came together with the scabbard and frog matching numbers. Let's go down again. Here we have a German Luftwaffe bread bag. M31 bread bag, little pocket knife, medical patch right there, collar tabs. We have a field bottle, typical German World War II Ziga can opener. And here we have some rations, some German rations that I found myself. Here we have an Arbeitsbuch, Wehrpass and Zoldbuch. Uh, this one is actually from a 17 year old boy who had to fight and was captured in 1945. There is his name, Private. Fritz. I really, really wonder what this kid saw, but he was only 17 years old. Obviously, these books are full of interesting information, but again, it's going to take too long if I'm getting into that. Uh, we got some interesting pictures here. Here we have a German officer sitting on a bench. Underneath that is actually another Wehrpass. Uh, this one was actually from a German medic. Uh, has a lot of interesting information inside of it. Here we have some propaganda. Some more pictures and some flyers. Here we have a toothbrush. Original German World War II toothbrush made from wood in unused condition. And two medical shoulder boards, Luftwaffe. I think right here we are finished. Then let's go to this pile of helmets that we have here. These helmets right here are all original shells. Um, there's quite a lot of them as you can see, different models. Here we have a model M1917. Then we have an M16, then we have an M18. Here we have a M35, another M35, M35, M42, M40, M42, and M42. You're probably wondering why do you have World War I helmets with uh, World War II decals on them? Well, they used these helmets again in the Second World War, so that's why. But yeah, as you can see, there's quite a bit of German helmets right here. Oh, and by the way, they're resting on a German World War II jerry can from 1941. It says Wehrmacht right there on the bottom. And right here we have a German ammo box, which is saying Oben nicht werfen, which means top, don't throw. I have some posters here and there, and I think it's time to open up this door so we have some more space. Before we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna turn around and show you this. Right here we have three rifles. The one above is a Gewehr 88. So this is a pre-World War I German rifle. These were still used during the First World War. And even in the Second World War, these rifles were used again, for instance, by the Volkssturm. You know, very late in the war when they didn't have anything to use anymore. So they would just use everything they had, even the pre-World War I rifles. Underneath that we have a Hambrug carbine. Uh, this is a Dutch rifle. So if I would reenact a Dutch soldier, for instance, I can use this rifle. But this is also another rifle that the Germans would use, especially late in the war. So for a late war Volkssturm impression, this would be a great rifle to use as well. But yeah, a very, very interesting and also rare and pretty expensive rifle to find and it's in great condition, matching numbers. Of course, underneath that, we have the famous Mauser K98K, Mauser K K98K or Karabiner 98 Kurz. K stands for Karabiner, which is carbine. 98 is model 98, and K means Kurz, which means short, because it's basically a shorter version of the Gewehr 98, which was the German World War I version, and it's just shorter, and that's why they call it K98K. So it's Karabiner Kurz, which is Short. So, Mauser K98, or just say Mauser K98, whatever you prefer. This is a German Mauser rifle in nice used condition. 
If you've been playing war games, you definitely recognize this sight. So yeah, three nice original historical weapons. Underneath that we have some uniforms. This one is missing some buttons because I had a very uh, clumsy reenactor who was getting too much into the fight and he decided to rip my uniform off and all the buttons flew away. So I still have to sew some buttons on. But these are uniforms that I use for reenacting, uh, short movies, pictures, stuff like that. This is an early M36 uniform. This is for the Iron Cross second class, original by the way. Right next to it, we have an SS uniform. This one is in the rank of SS Unterschaffführer. Underneath it, we have another uh, German uniform. It's M40, standard German army uniform. And right here we have another one. This one is HBT. This one has all the medals on it. Nahkampfspange or close combat. Uh, Infanterie Sturmabzeichen, Verwundetenabzeichen, Iron Cross second class. Very nice material, great for in the summer. Now I think we should walk this way and then turn around and walk inside this room. I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but before we walk into this room, I really have to split the video in one more part because I was editing the video and it's just gonna take too long. It is gonna be over an hour otherwise, so I have to split the video in one more part before we go inside here. The next part, I will go in here and show you around in here, but I talk too much. <laughs> There's too much to explain, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna split it in one more part. I really hope you enjoyed the historical journey so far. So I'm going to end this video right here and I will edit the next part as soon as I can. So for now, I wanna say thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the collection tour so far. If you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part. See you next time.